Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is time for another true crime video yet again, and today we will be talking about Yu Young Chol, also known as the Raincoat Killer, one of South Korea's most notorious serial killers. Yu Young Chol was born on April 18, 1970. Growing up, he had a pretty difficult life due to severe poverty. His father was a Vietnam War veteran who received a huge payout after the war ended. However, he spent all of this on alcohol and gambling. Now, aside from being an alcoholic, his father was also very abusive towards him, his mother, and his siblings. In 1978, his mother finally decided to file for a divorce when Yung Chol was only 8 years old. He and his siblings were then left to be raised by their maternal grandmother. After this, his mother simply vanished from their lives and stopped contacting them. A few years later, their father, who had recently got remarried, took them in. However, he was still the same. He was still an abusive alcoholic and even worse, his new wife was no better. She was also very abusive towards the kids, mentally, verbally, and physically. She would also often get violent towards them for the smallest reasons. Their way of life did not improve either. They would sometimes spend months living without electricity nor water. And life was very cruel for Young Chol and his siblings. Aside from the extreme poverty, Young Cho didn't have a good school life either. He had no friends and would often be bullied for being poor. In 1985, when Young Cho was 15 years old, his father died in a vehicular accident. After this, he told himself that he would never turn out like his dad. Now, despite everything that he had already gone through, he found happiness in creating art. Young Chol was a very talented artist and wanted to pursue this as his career. In 1987, at the age of 17, he applied at the Anyang Art School only to get rejected due to his lack of resources. He simply could not afford to pay for his education, so instead he enrolled at a technical school. And of course, this hurt him deeply. Poverty got in the way of him having a happy and normal childhood and now it was getting in the way of his future. This is when he started to develop a hatred against the wealthy, angry at the fact that they were given all the opportunities that he longed for. In 1988, Young Chol was sent to a juvenile detention center after getting caught stealing a guitar and a tape recorder from a neighbor. After getting released, he started to steal again and this time he began taking bigger things like expensive cameras, cash, jewelry, and even cars. In 1990, he spent another 10 months in prison for burglary. After his release in 1991, he met a masseuse named Huang Mo. Now the two fell in love, started dating, and eventually got married. In the same year, Young Chao's older brother sadly took his own life due to the difficulties he was experiencing brought on by disability. In 1994, Young Chao and Huang Mo welcomed a son. However, Young Chao never changed his ways. He was arrested yet again for eight months after getting caught stealing a car. After being released, he was diagnosed with epilepsy and bipolar disorder and spent a few months in a psychiatric facility. Now, after getting discharged from this facility in 1995, he started to illegally distribute pornography involving minors. Again, he was caught doing this and was sentenced to three years in prison. Shortly after his release in 1998, he was caught again, this time for impersonating a police officer and was charged to two years. 
after his release in the year 2000, he was put back in prison yet again for another three and a half years for sexually assaulting a 15-year-old girl. Now, after he was caught for this, Huang Mo finally filed for a divorce. And feeling betrayed, Yong Cho started to develop a hatred towards women as well. Now, during his three and a half year sentence, Yong Cho spent his time in prison reading and learning about serial killers and how they committed their crimes. Now, I am not sure how and why he has access to this type of material, but this really inspired him. On September 2003, he was released from prison once again and decided to move in with his estranged mother. He was also granted permission to see his son. However, he had something more sinister in mind. Now, Yong Chul had initially planned to get revenge and kill Huang Mo and their seven-year-old son. But he changed his mind at the very last minute as he felt sorry for them. So, he decided to take his anger out on someone else. He hated the wealthy, so he wanted to get rid of them. On September 24th, 2003, he walked around the Shinsadong neighborhood to look for a house with no CCTV cameras. He then found a random house where a 73-year-old retired professor and his wife lived. He brought gloves, a kitchen knife with a 7-inch blade, and a raincoat, which he wore during the attacks. Yong Chul stabbed the elderly man to death as his wife watched. Now fearful for her own life, the wife leads Yong Chul to their closet where they kept their money, telling him to just take all of it. And this is when he tells her that he wasn't doing this for the money. He then proceeded to kill her as well. And he never took anything, not even a dime, from that closet. A month later, he went into the same neighborhood, and this time he killed a 69-year-old man. After that, he also chose a random home that he lit on fire, killing everyone inside. And these victims were in their 50s all the way to their 80s. Now, during this killing spree, Yong Cho had actually met a woman who worked as an escort and started dating her. However, this relationship did not last long as she started to suspect him of being a psychopath. According to her, he would lose his temper quickly and would get violent and would often be very secretive about his whereabouts. And she just felt like he was a dangerous person. Now, when she decided to break things off, he got extremely angry and held her captive for a while, actually planning to take her life. However, he couldn't. He felt bad for her. So instead, he took his anger out on someone else again. He called the escort service company and hired a 24-year-old woman to spend the night with him in his apartment. Now, once they were there, this woman noticed how aggressive he was and wanted to back out of this appointment and just have him refunded. However, before she could even leave the place, he wore his raincoat and started to viciously attack her. And once he was done, he took her body up a nearby hill and buried her there. After this, he hired and killed nine more women, all from the same escort service company. Now, this was 10 women in total, and the company finally started to notice that their employees had stopped showing up for work. And all of these absences were unexplained. So they decided to do some digging and went over their records. And this is when they realized that all of these 10 women were booked by the same person, Yu Young Chol. Now, they told the authorities immediately and once Yong Cho attempted to book another escort, the company called the police right away. On July 15, 2004, Yu Yong Cho would be apprehended for the last time. He was arrested and sentenced to death. This was when he confessed to everything, telling the authorities that he decided to take his anger out on other people because he couldn't fathom hurting someone he personally knew. He also revealed that before he began his killing spree, 
he practiced on a few neighborhood dogs that he would take in a secluded area. Now, years after his arrest, he expressed how remorseful he was. But this did not change the fact that he was still on death row. Yu Young Chul is now in his 50s and is still serving time. And although he was given the death sentence, it seems like he will spend the rest of his life in prison instead, considering the fact that the last death sentence in South Korea was executed all the way back in 1997. So just to give you guys a recap of all of his crimes, Yu Young Chol was arrested multiple times from his teens all the way to his early 20s for petty theft and burglaries. He illegally distributed pornography involving minors, impersonated a police officer, raped a 15-year-old girl, burned a house down, and killed at least 20 people. Now, I have no idea why, but this really reminded me of the Lady Om case. Because if you watched that video, there were already so many red flags and this already happened multiple times and yet um, the authorities were not able to do anything to prevent people from getting hurt or killed. Now, I don't want to judge the Korean justice system or the Korean authorities for two crimes, but these crimes are pretty old. These all happened during the 90s all the way to the early 2000s, and hopefully everything has improved by now. But yeah, as usual, I would love to hear your thoughts on this case. And should there be any other case that you would like for me to cover on this channel, please let me know in the comments section. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys on my next video.